everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And today I'm gonna to show you how I actually propagate roses. I never thought about it. You know, today I was getting ready and thinking about doing some more roses and I thought, I've never talked about that because it was kind of off topic. But then again, it isn't it, for you guys that make rose hip tea. And then roses are really nice. Let me show you what I've got here. All right. These are cuttings off a rose bush that grows in the yard. I put it in a cup of water. So this way, when I first did the cuttings, they would stay nice and fresh. And you know how I love my pockets. I didn't have a pocket on this t-shirt, but my aprons that I make have pockets. This is just a food bag. I made dairy a brownie, gluten-free brownie. What I'm gonna do is I've cut these roses, the ones I want. I'm gonna trim them down, but I wanna get I want to get some of those thorns off so I do not get stuck too bad. And maybe, ouch, okay, as I was saying this, I'm getting stuck. This has got a lot of thorns, but I don't want to just cut the thorns off and have them ending up everywhere. So I want to get them off before I start working. And I'm going to trim them down a little bit. Some of the side shoots, we don't need that much. Let's see if I've got most of the thorns. This one has... One more on the bottom. The reason I'm using an old food bag is normally this would go in the trash. Can't really plant in them. They break down real quick. But I can put my thorns in there and throw them in the trash so I'm not digging in the soil and getting stuck. So we're gonna get some of those thorns off. I think we did pretty good on this one. The reason I decided to do this is I'm gonna transplant a rose that I've already done and I do it in a very lazy way. You can put these in a pot. You can, it, they do better if you put them in good potting soil and do cuttings that way. But I'm so lazy, I shouldn't use the word lazy. I have no time to do all this. So I actually sometimes put them in my totes and put them among my vegetable plants. Oh, this one is not gonna be able to get them all. So let's just do it this way. Just so I get most of them, cause I don't wanna get all stuck up or I could just leave it and be very careful. I got a lot of it off. Let's get that really nasty looking one off. All right, and I'll do the same thing here. It's kind of like how I do my fig trees. I go ahead and I have my, well, you know, you take your kitchen scraps. You know how I just put everything in there and plant. I don't wait, I don't turn. Well, I also can grow cuttings in there at the same time. And provided you don't let them get as big as my papayas, you get them out very young you can double duty in your garden if you're doing container gardening, be it a bucket, a tote, or whatever, your, a raised bed that you're growing in. And you can be growing other things besides just your vegetables. And then this way you're not waiting. You know, what's really nice is when you have a lot of stuff going on and things that are doing things now and things that are coming in the future, you're not waiting for that one plant. So you just do this and it grows and you've got the excitement now of having multiple things show up and that's what I love. So now I can take this and throw this away and now I can get these planted. I think I'm gonna plant some here and I'm not sure if I'll do any of my chair garden. My chair garden! Let's walk over to the chair garden. Let me show you the rose that I planted that is growing in the chair garden. And let me get some water in this while this waits for me to get planted. So water out of the bottom of the toes. Let's walk over to the chair garden. This goes in the trash. So now I'm in my chair garden and I'm growing a rose bush under the celery and my tomato, which is long gone. Let me trim this back so you can see. I'm hoping this camera will pick it up. And since this tomato is really out, and gone. I'm going to see if I can get the stem out of the way. This tomato has done its job. It's giving me a rose bush. All right, so now I think you can see it. I have a rose bush that is growing under the celery next to the tomato plant. And I'm going to dig it out and get it in its own pot. And it's so easy to do. So let me, you know what, I'm going to put on some gloves real quick. I reuse these until they're no good. Really, it's not the tomato plant that is making the rose bush grow. It's actually the rich soil by making your own soil, but you can do it in potting soil if you really keep up with it and watch it, make sure it never dries out. 
but this way I don't have to take care of it. I stick in a twig off of a rose that I like and forget about it and come back whenever I feel to see if it's any good. So let's get this out and then I'll get this potted. But this here is a little rose starting and I see it's gonna need some trimming. This is a popolo. Let's see if I can get this out. I'm gonna just, oh, get down there and let's get this thing out. Okay, remember it's set root in there next to the tomato. Tomato's gone, the celery's still growing. Okay, let me see. Come on, come on, come on. Got my hand, oh no, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, we have cut it. Look at this, there it is. Let me get you closer and I'll show you what I'm going to do because I'm just gonna repot it right now and then move it somewhere, probably on one of my totes. So let me get over here and get the camera. All I'm going to do is plant it in this pot. I throw in some collard leaves and stuff, just like I do everything else. And let's see what's going on here. Here's the root system. Isn't that beautiful? We can trim this back. I don't know if that's alive. We'll trim that. This definitely can be trimmed off. I don't see any thorns, so I'm not going to worry about that. And look at that. I have a new rose bush. I've got all these beautiful roots, which really don't want, don't want to disturb too much. And what I like to do is water. What? I water first before I plant. I know a lot of people water afterwards, but I really like watering first. This way I know that the water is really going to get absorbed good. So I kind of mix it up a little bit. It's just my way. And I'm probably going to leave it here just so I can see it. Mix it up really good. Make sure it's really, really wet. All right. Now I'm just going to add in. This is just compost. It's basically more from another tote I took out. Going to get this little rose in here. And see, you don't want to go further down than there's the little bit of a crown. So go around there. See that how beautiful that is? From a cutting! A cutting! And a cutting that I didn't have to take care of. It's basically plant and forget. That's all it is, is plant and forget. Hopefully it will take off really fast. Let's give it a good water. And that is something that I took as a cutting. Just like I do my fig trees, same way that I didn't have to bother with. We're gonna leave this, let's go get the other ones planted that I showed you how easy it is to propagate in the way I grow my vegetables. Okay, little one. So here is a tomato that's just starting to come up in here that I planted, and I'm going to get these rose cuttings in here. Now keep in mind, not every single rose cutting is going to grow, so plant a few of them. And let's see, I need a great tool. Look at this, from the ground. <laughs> That's the tool I'm going to use. And it's really simple. I'm just gonna plant it in there. The first thing I do is I water. You know how I water. This is water that's really rich coming out of my totes, but you can use any water. All right, so let's get that in there. And now I have to reach between my tomato cage I've already put up. I'm just gonna poke some holes and get my roses in there. That's all there is to it. Get it way down deep in there and press that soil next to it. You don't want any air pockets when you're doing cuttings. Let's put another one next to it. And let's pick out another one. Now, truthfully, I should get some more of these leaves off. And I think I will trim them off a little bit more. It doesn't need all the leaves. Because it will put a lot of energy into the leaves. So we can trim off quite a few of the leaves. And you don't have to take the whole leaf. You can take half the leaf just because it doesn't need that many. You can even take more leaves than that. The main thing is the stem, and then it has some leaves on it. I'll leave that many for now. The other one, I probably should have gotten some more off. I do it all different ways. And then you just press it in there. Leave a little divot so when you water, you know it's going directly to the stem. Now let's get a little bit more leaves off the other one, just right in there, right where it is. Doesn't matter that the leaves fall in there, it's compost. Okay, all right, and we have one more. We'll stick that somewhere. And then you can come back later when you see if they've taken root and you can move them. It could take a few weeks, it could take longer, it doesn't matter, I'm in no hurry. And then watering back all of them a little bit. That's it, that, we are done. Now we just forget about it and let them do their thing, and we can come back and take them out later and transplant them anywhere we want. And one last thing. 
you don't have to grow it in a large tote. Here, I actually have one growing in with my lettuce and this one is already growing. So you can do it in any size container you choose to do it in. Just make sure you don't let it dry out. This one already has set roots. See? They can't see. They want to see. See this one set roots? See the le new leaves are starting to grow on this one? The top can be trimmed. And if your dog doesn't eat it, you have a new rose bush. So I hope I gave you some ideas how to grow roses in your vegetable containers. It is so easy and you don't need tomatoes. You can put it under any of your herbs or vegetables you're growing. Check on it periodically. When you see that it's starting to root and you tug at it and it's good and snug, pot it in its own pot and you have a new rose bush. And you know what? Don't forget to tag them and maybe date it so you'll remember exactly when you planted it. And that's it. Now you have it tagged. You can watch and see if it's rooted. And keep in mind, they don't all take. So don't do just one. Do a few cuttings off of some of your favorite rose bushes. And you know what? If you've got friends or neighbors that have really big rose bushes that you like, sneak a cutting. You only need a small one. Or ask. I would knock on their door and ask. Maybe make them a few cuttings and you could bring it back to them. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.